here we go again. You know exactly what this means. Last time we gave my racing sim controlled RC car a manual gearbox, ABS, a handbrake, and a laser. But today, instead of controlling how the car moves, let's prototype how to move the driver instead. Here's how I built a real-time six degree of freedom motion platform to eventually make this project truly immersive. To start things out, I needed to find a way to send data from the car to my computer. A tethered connection was out of the question, because memories of a four-year-old Bits Bits tangled up in wires while a small toy car ran circles around him and his older brother laughed maniacally, showing no signs of stopping, pleading for freedom, wires constricting, can't breathe, are all too real. There were a bunch of different methods I could have used to transmit the signal, LoRa, Wi-Fi, that kind of thing. But being somewhat of an Adafruit fanboy, I knew they had an RP2040 with an RFM69 nice. module. This was pretty much a match made in heaven because the 915 megahertz version would play nicely with my 2.4 gigahertz ELRS transmitter and receiver, as well as my 5.8 gigahertz video system. Less interference means fewer headaches. Theoretically, the RP2040 RFM69 nice. would allow me to have a super fast, reliable, and continuous data stream coming from the car, while one attached to my computer would act as a receiver. Sounds easy, right? This time it actually was. Yes. After finding the right libraries and base sketches to prototype with, I was able to get data streaming with only two to three milliseconds of latency from about 30 meters or 100 feet. This is really important for immersion because I don't want to crash and feel the impact after a perceptible delay. I want my body to think I'm being crumpled by a streetlight as the car plows into it. So now that data transmission was solved, I had to figure out what kind of data to transmit. And that meant gyro research. Well, more specifically, inertial measurement unit research. I opted for an IMU because I want as much data to play with as possible. You know the saying, more data, more better. I went with an Adafruit LSM-6 DSOX plus LIST-3 MDL 9 degree of freedom sensor. This gave me gyro, accelerometer, and magnetometer in a small enough package to fit in front of the camera system. Now that I had all the components, I had to get everything mounted prior to getting the magnetometer calibrated. All of that IMU research showed me a ton of horror stories about improper calibration leading to a lot of headaches for other nerds. With the car powered on to simulate running conditions, I started a calibration routine, which meant I had to rotate the car around as uniform of a sphere as I could muster in all different directions and not catch my fingers in the fans while doing so. After six calibration runs, I was finally satisfied with the fit error invariance and took note of the hard and soft calibration values to build into the code. Speaking of code, I implemented a calibration or zeroing routine for the gyro and accelerometer that takes place after every startup. If I power the car on, on a flat level surface and don't move it for five seconds, it's good to go. If the surface isn't level enough, it leads to the axes mixing their outputs in weird ways. Fun fact. This is also a hard way to determine your workbench isn't quite level enough. Once I got over that headache, I got to work on formatting the data on the transmission side. By sending comma separated values like this, gyro XYZ, accelerometer XYZ, and magnetometer XYZ, I can easily pass all the raw gyro data to the computer for the heavy lifting with Python, leaving only calibration and transmission for the Raspberry Pi. Don't worry though, this Pi is going to have its work cut out for it in the future, handling the force feedback, traction control, braking and speed data, as well as multiplexing for an active aero system. But that's future stuff. With what seemed to be good data streaming from the car to the computer, I started designing the motion platform. Remember what I said about not having any engineering experience? Yeah, that meant I had more research to do. Starting from scratch, I threw a few shapes on the screen that looked like they would work. When I was done, I 3D printed a prototype. Surprise, it didn't work. The top platform was way too loose, so I needed a redesign, but at least I knew what to fix. After the redesign, the platform was ready and I could move on to the next step. 
This was by far the hardest part. Math. Having struggled with it my entire life, I knew I had a long road ahead of me. Luckily, a lot of creators who are way smarter than me had some great resources to pull me through the mess. Four dimension complex numbers and Euler angles were all starting to make sense. They were about as much sense as they could make to a guy like me. For the sake of the video, I'll skip through the really heavy math stuff and explain it like this during a crash montage. When the IMU sends gyro, accelerometer, and magnetometer data to the computer, it first arrives as raw sensor readings. These tell me how the car moves in real space, but raw data alone isn't enough to accurately represent motion. I need orientation information. This is where things get complex. First, I convert these raw values into quaternions, four-dimensional complex numbers great for handling rotations without some of the pitfalls of simpler methods. Quaternions avoid gimbal lock issues and help manage smooth rotational movements, especially important in rapid movements like car crashes and jumps. From there, I use a sensor fusion algorithm, a Magwit filter, to integrate gyro data over time, correct it using accelerometer and magnetometer readings, and convert these results into Euler angles, pitch, roll, and yaw. Finally, these Euler angles feed into inverse kinematic equations specifically designed for a Stewart platform, translating these angles into precise servo positions, resulting in accurate real-time motion. With that, I could drive the platform. I melded my script with Yoxi's Stewart Pi repo and finally got to testing the platform with the car's gyro. I'll put a link to Yoxi's work in the description. He did a really awesome job. I'd be completely deadlocked without it. I implemented travel limits for pitch, roll, yaw, surge, sway, and heave. Then started working on scaling and filtering. Yaw return to center. Was that okay? No? Were you nauseous at all? This will be an ongoing process. The Lego Man isn't a very good communicator, so I don't really know what movements feel right and which don't relative to the car's movements. At the rate I do projects, it'll probably take me a decade or so to build a motion system for my simulator and probably another year or so to make a video about it. But who knows, maybe one might show up in the mail. Projects like this motion platform aren't just about adding realism to the simulator. They're about pushing yourself to learn something new, no matter how complicated or intimidating it seems at first. If you've been holding onto an idea just because it feels like it's too much math, too much hardware, or just plain too ambitious, trust me, give it a try. There's always a way through and it's almost never as smooth as it looks in the final edit. Thanks for sticking around for another one of my ramble sessions. Don't really know where I'm going with any of this, but hopefully you learned something. Maybe you didn't. Maybe you think I'm an idiot. That's okay. I probably am. But if you liked the video, leave a thumbs up. If you have nerd friends that'll like it, share it with them. And if you want more, subscribe.
Well, big guy. How did that feel? Oh.